Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N's Robot Review, supported by Electrics, making coding accessible. This week, I'm going to introduce you to the NEZA Inventors Kit. Let's check it out. Electrics were founded in 2011 and focus on the Microbit kits. They are the official BBC Microbit partners in China and also sponsored the Do Your Bit Challenge in 2021 and 2022. The aim of the NEZA Inventors Kit is to cultivate and inspire kids' imagination and make every kid an inventor. So let's see what's contained within the NEZA Inventors Kit. The NEZA Inventors Kit is split into two levels. On the first level, we have this big white block which is the NEZA expansion board. Under that, there is a grey servo next to two red motors. Along the top, there is a trumpet, three different LED lights, a crash sensor, a line tracking sensor, and then down below that, there is a soil sensor next to a cable and some tweezers, and underneath that, there is a motion sensor, as well as a ball and some wheels. When you lift that top layer out, you'll see there are lots of different bags of pieces that look very similar to building blocks that children will be used to. Underneath all of those building blocks, there is also a track that you can use the line tracking sensor with. The NEZA Inventors Kit can either be ordered with or without a microbit board. Mine arrived without a microbit board because I already have access to one. There isn't an app or guide that comes with the NEZA Inventors Kit. However, Electrics do have guides on their website. And although it's advertised as a 48 in 1, there are actually over 70 cases of things that you can build and code with the NEZA Inventors Kit guide on the Electrics website. So now that we've seen what's inside the box, I'm going to build and code what is on the front of the box, which is the NEZA Inventors Kit Shrimp. When you open up the guide and click on case 1 for the shrimp, it will show you all of the different parts that you need, so you're not left having to rake through bags trying to find the part you need for each individual step. You can look all of these out in advance and be ready to get building. The steps are quite straightforward as long as you've pulled out the right parts. Sometimes you might discover you've not pulled out quite the right part or you're not sure how to attach it, so there is plenty of opportunities for problem solving, as I discovered myself while I was building this shrimp. Another great thing about this is that the NEZA expansion board is charged via a USB cable, so there is no need for batteries, and they say that one charge would last you for three lessons. One of the good things about the Inventors Kit is the blocks that it comes with are blocks that children will already be very familiar with, so that takes away one of the barriers to entry. They're not going to be put off by something completely new, there is something there that they are already familiar with. While I'm piecing together this shrimp, why don't we learn some facts about shrimps? The term shrimp is used to refer to some decapod crustaceans. There are actually over 2,000 species of shrimps. And shrimp are widespread, they can be found near the sea floor of most coasts and estuaries, as well as in rivers and lakes, and they usually live from 1 to 7 years. Shrimp can range in length from a few millimetres to more than 20 centimetres, which is about 8 inches, although the average size for a shrimp is about 4 to 8 centimetres, or 1.5 to 3 inches. They're characterised by a body that is compressed from side to side, long antennae and legs, thin and semi-transparent exoskeleton, lamellar gills and a thin-like tail. The colour of a shrimp is influenced by its natural habitat. Some subspecies are able to change colour to fit in with surroundings. Shrimp in tropical and subtropical habitats are brightly coloured. Others are transparent so that predators have a difficult time spotting them. Brown and green shrimp are often found in muddy riverbeds. Most shrimp are omnivorous. Their food consists mostly of small plants and animals, however some shrimp species feed on carrion. The muscular tails of many shrimp are edible to humans and they are widely caught and farmed for human consumption. In fact, commercial shrimp species support an industry which is worth $50 billion a year. Shrimp have high levels of omega-3 fatty acids and low levels of mercury. 
As with other seafood, shrimp is high in calcium, iodine and protein, but low in food energy. The terms shrimp and prawn are common names, not scientific names. Their close relatives include crabs, crayfish and lobsters. Now that my shrimp is built, it's time to move on to the coding aspect, and you'll see that there are coding instructions there underneath the building instructions. Because the NESA Inventors Kit uses a microbit board, it just uses a microbit coding app, which you can download onto any iOS or Android device. When I open up the microbit app, I'm going to click on Create Code, and this opens up a template with two blocks already in it, one called On Start and one called Forever. Now, to code with the NESA Inventors Kit, we need to add a couple of extensions. One of these is Planet X and the other one is NESA, and you'll see both of these in my menus at the left hand side. To add on these extensions, you want to click on that block there called Extensions, and then search for NESA and download the NESA extension, and then Planet X and download the Planet X extension, not the Planet X AI for coding the shrimp. Now all I'm going to do is start dragging blocks out to fill in the coding based on the instructions on the NESA guide. You'll notice this is using scratch based block coding, which again is something that children will already be familiar with, so it again removes another barrier to entry for them. Also, if they've already got experience using a microbit, they will already be familiar with the microbit app and how to create coding in it by clicking in the different menus and dragging blocks out to join them together. Gradually, I'm piecing together the coding for my shrimp to have it moving its claws and moving its wheels. I'm also creating some coding for the sensor on the front, so that if it detects an obstacle in front of it, the shrimp is going to change its direction to get out of the way of the obstacle. Now that I've finished putting in all of the coding blocks based on the instructions, it's time to turn on my micro bit, set it up and pair it with my tablet. I'll need to have my Bluetooth turned on for this because that is how it connects to the micro bit. And the micro bit also goes through a wee bit of a setup process where it asks you to shake it, tilt it and clap just so it knows that all of its sensors are working. Back on the main page of the app, I'm going to click on choose micro bit and then I'm going to click on pair a new micro bit. It shows you how to do the pairing process, so I'm just going to go through and set that up to link my micro bit to my tablet. Now that the two things are paired, it is time to transfer the coding that I have built in my program onto the micro bit. I'm going to go back to the main page of the app and then you see there is an option there called Flash. When I select this and hit Flash, it is going to show me how to flash this onto my micro bit. I need to put the micro bit into the pairing process again, but then the coding is going to flash over. Now, because the first block in the coding was on start and it was telling the shrimp to move, as soon as this is finished flashing to my micro bit, this shrimp is going to move. So you need to be aware of that when you're coding your own items at home, that your program might have things suddenly moving and you need to be prepared to stop them or be ready to run them in a safe place. I was prepared to stop my shrimp before it went rolling away off the table when the flashing was finished, but now I'm going to turn on that NESA expansion board, which will turn on the micro bit, and then I'm going to see my shrimp in action. As my shrimp is driving about the table, I'm putting my hand in front of those sensors, and every time the shrimp detects an obstacle, you'll notice it very quickly changes its direction. I'm having fun just actually trying to keep it on the table without it running away off ahead of me, because it is moving very quickly. You can get as creative as you want with your shrimp. I've just had mine driving about on the table to show you its capabilities, but you could set it up somewhere with lots of obstacles to see how the shrimp copes with that, or even see if you could get it to move through a track with lots of different obstacles for it to dodge. You can even create your own coding for the shrimp, you don't need to stick with what's there on the NESA Inventors Guide, that's just to get you started. But the whole idea of the NESA Inventors Kit is to encourage your creativity. Well, that's all for this week, I hope you enjoyed it. A huge thank you to Alec Freaks for reaching out and sending me the NESA Inventors Kit, and I'll be back next week with another video looking at another couple of the cases from the NESA Inventors Guide. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here, and I've added links here to the other STEM demonstration and explanation videos I do, here to my robot review videos, and here to my Things You Should Know series. This has been STEM with Mr. N's Robot Review, introducing you to the NESA Inventors Kit. <laughs>